Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make these really cool Twitter headers. Uh, well, they don't have to be Twitter headers, they can do channel arts, they can be anything pretty much. They look pretty nice and uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to show you guys how to make these and yeah, let's get into it. So first off, we're going to go to File, New and uh, the dimensions for Twitter header are width 1500 by 500 pixels and the channel arts would be different so you might have to download a template for those and uh, yeah, so just press OK. And now we've now that we've got that uh, now that we've got our canvas open, we're going to click on this padlock just to unlock our background layer. And uh, now that we're going now that we've done that, we're going to press Command Backspace to fill the layer with our background color. Um, or you can literally just flip it to your uh, to our foreground color and then use our paint bucket tool. And it will do the same thing. But um, yeah, so now that we've done that, we need to find out where the center of our design is. So to do that, we're going to press Command T on our background layer, and we're going to drag in from the rulers on the side of the canvas. If you don't have your rulers open, just press Command R, and that will hide and show them. And uh, you can also hide and show the uh, the, um, the actual lines by pressing Command colon. So you can do it like that. And uh, once you've done that, just press on the tick at the top, and then now we can actually start designing. So first off, we're going to do is we're just going to click and drag in over, or just drag in some gameplay that I found. I literally just found this on Google. It's really easy to find. Um, I think I literally just typed in uh, CS:GO Cinematic, and then uh, changed the. I went to Search Tools and then changed the size to large. And uh, yeah, it's a really good way of finding really high quality pictures. And uh, yes, now that we've done that, we're going to go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. And uh, you can now see that, um, well, we've blurred our image. And we can uh, change the how much we want to blur it using this slider. And we don't want to blur it too much. We'll probably go for about uh, 2.3. I think that's what I use in the example. And um, now just press OK. And uh, you need to make sure, before you do that, you need to make sure that this layer was a smart layer. If you dragged in the image, then it'll automatically be a smart layer. But um, if you went to file open and then dragged it in, then it won't be. So if you if you went to file open, you just need to right click and then it will say convert to smart. Uh, yeah, just smart object, and uh, you can just do that. So once you've blurred it, um, you will get this uh, smart filters mask, and uh, that's the reason why we need to change it to a smart object because if you don't change it to a smart object, then you won't have this mask. And uh, yeah, so you just want to click on the mask, then go to our eraser tool. And then we can just erase the blur from some of the important parts of the image. So you might as well uh, like erase the blur from the people in the image, not all of the people, just the heads and maybe the, the gun, just the points of focus in the image. And uh, yeah, so now we've done that, we're just going to lower the opacity of the image right down. And um, yeah, I think that'll be fine. We do want it to be quite dark, but uh, okay, that'll be good. So now we've done that, we're going to make a new layer just by clicking on this icon down here. Then press B on your keyboard to go to your brush tool and uh, we're going to make sure that white is our foreground color so you can just press x on your keyboard to switch the foreground and background colors or you can just press the icon and uh, yeah so now we want the brush to be pretty big so we can change the size of our brush just by using our square bracket keys and uh, yes we want it to be reasonably big so we might want to zoom out a little and uh, we're just going to click once at the top I think that would be a bit too much actually so we might make our brush a bit smaller um, okay I think that will be good and uh, yeah, so once you've done that, you can go to your opacity and just lower the opacity of the light. So to so find out how big we want it, uh, I think that'll be fine. And okay, so now that we've done that, you want to click back onto your uh, gameplay layer and just go to this icon down here and then go to solid color. And uh, now you can see that we've basically got a whole new layer and it's just basically one solid color. This is where you can select the color of our banner. Uh, so the example is red, so you might just go for red again, but you don't need to go for red, you can pick any of these colors. Uh, just press OK, once you've found your color, then change the blending mode, which is up here, to color. And then you can see that we've basically made the whole background a, a red, we basically gave it a red tint. And um, yeah, so now we've done that, well, I'm going to go back to my gameplay layer, actually lower the opacity a bit more, because once you do the thing with the, with the, uh, the color fill, it actually lightens the image of it. And uh, we don't really want that, so we're just going to decrease the opacity of the background image even more. And okay, so now that we've done that, we're just going to show our rulers again just by pressing Command colon, and uh, we're going to go to our shape tool. I think the default would have would be the um, the rectangle tool. So you just want to click and hold, and then go to ellipse. And okay, so once you've done that, you're just going to go to your middle, and you want to hold Shift and Alt, and just want to drag out. And this is where we're going to make the circles that we have 
in our in our example here. So you can see we just made a plain uh, white circle. These colors actually don't matter. So uh, if you do have these colors, just don't worry about them because we're going to be changing them. And uh, yeah, so now that we've made our circle, we need to make sure that it is above the color fill. So you just want to click and drag it above just like that. And uh, okay, so now that you've done that, we're going to go to our fill, which is right here. And we're going to change it all the way down to 0%. Just because all the effects that we're going to be doing with the circle will be in the blending options. And uh, yeah, so we don't actually want the white part of the circle. So now what we're going to do is we're going to double click on the circle layer. Then we're going to go to inner glow, which is right here. And uh, now you can see that we've got a bit of a glow. And that is exactly what we want. So we might just change a little bit. We might increase it. Um, I think for this one, I think I'm going to go for about 80. That would be good. You guys can just pause the video and copy down all of these uh, digits. Although I think they will be the same anyway. So once you've done that, we're going to go to drop shadow. And uh, we're going to mess, just mess around with the drop shadow just a little bit. Uh, might want to increase the opacity as well. So I think we're going to get to 100% on the opacity. Um, uh, decrease the spread a bit. And okay, so yeah, you just might want to, like I said before, you might want to pause the video, just copy down these digits, and uh, just press OK once you've done that. Um, okay, nice. So once we've done that, we're going to go to our circle layout. We, will, we should already have it selected, but we're going to press Command and J. And what that will do is that will duplicate, duplicate the layer. And uh, now we can press Command T and hold Shift and Command to just drag it out just to make multiple circles, just the same way as we did before. So just press Command J again and um, press Command T to drag it out using Alt and Shift. And uh, once you've done that, we can just click on the tick. And uh, now you can see it looks pretty cool. We've got all our circles. But what I like to do is I like to remove the drop shadow from the um, from the two outer circles. So it's going to click on the eye of the drop of those drop shadows and it just adds more emphasis onto the middle circle which is where we're going to have the logo and actually I think I'm going to make this outer circle a bit bigger so let's just click drag it out and uh, okay so it's already looking pretty cool and um, now we're just going to go and import our logo so this is I was just looking through my logos file and this was one that I found I thought it looked pretty cool this is Crim6's logo you probably know who that is and uh, yes yeah, so we're just going to click drag it in and we're going to show our rulers again just so we can make sure that it is all centered so pressing command T we can actually edit the well we can transform the, the logo making it smaller and bigger and uh, okay and we just want to position it properly and then we can just press enter okay so now that we've done that I can hide my rulers again just like that and what I, now you can see that the banner is actually a completely different color to the logo and we can either change the color of the logo or we can change the color of the um, of the banner. I'm going to show you both ways. So to change the color of the of the banner, just go to our color fill that we have down here. Just double click on it, and then we can just use the eyedropper tool, and uh, we just click over here. And now you can see that the whole banner has changed color, and it looks pretty cool like that. I'm not going to lie. It probably would look better if I was to keep it this color, but um, I'm going to show you the other way as well. So um, if I was to change the color of the logo now, I would go to our logo layer and uh, I press command U and now we have this window pop up and this is where we can actually change the color of the logo and uh, so we want to make it a bit red so we're going to go to here and then we'll increase the saturation a bit and now you can see that we basically made the logo red and uh, yeah so just press OK and now as you can see in our example that we actually have like some layer styles going on in the actual logo so to, to do that we are going to double click on our logo this, I think we added a drop shadow again we're just going to use the same settings that we use for the circle so we won't actually need to change anything here and we can go to our gradient overlay we need to make sure this blend mode is on multiply and then we just lower the opacity down uh, actually we could keep it up I suppose and then we can also just click and drag on the actual image just to move the gradient around so actually we're going to move it up and then lower the opacity a bit uh, okay that'll be, that looks pretty cool so now that we've done that I'm going to go to satin and uh, again, you might just want to copy these down just because it might take a while just to explain what all of these do. But yeah, satin is a really cool effect that you can put on logos and text, anything like that. You just want to make sure that your contour is this shape right here. And uh, the distance is 30, the size is 24. And um, obviously the angle doesn't really mean much. It just kind of changes the, the look that you have on the, um, on the logo. Uh, blend mode is overlay and then opacity is 50%. And uh, okay, so we've got we got our logo on. We've added a layer style, 
and uh, we've done all of our formatting for the circles and everything like that so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add a texture so I'm just going to, I just got this texture for my uh, download so I'm just going to click and drag it in and uh, you just want to use alt and shift to make it the whole size of the whole canvas I just got this this texture from Google so as you can see here Google is a really good source for imagery and uh, stocks and stuff like that so yeah, I literally just got the, actually it wasn't the first one, it was the fourth one on the whole page so um, yeah, so you just want to click drag it in and we're actually going to put it below, I mean just above our color fill so it will be below our circles but just above the color fill and uh, once we've done that, we're just going to set the blending option to overlay and uh, we can actually lower the opacity of that texture now. And uh, yeah, so that's basically how we do this uh, this Twitter header tutorial. And in my opinion, it looks pretty cool. Let me know what you think of the, in the description, I mean in the, in the comment section. And uh, yeah, so thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video.